Um, hi, so uh, my name is Matt Bostock. I work at Cloudflare, and this morning I want to talk, you, talk to you about how we're monitoring uh, Cloudflare's Planet Scale Edge network using uh, Prometheus. Um, so I work on the platform operations team at Cloudflare. Um, I'm going to be talking you through basically um, over a year and a half's work of um, integrating Prometheus within Cloudflare um, to monitor our edge network and also our internal services. Um, so. We use uh, Prometheus for monitoring. Um, so by monitoring, I mean alerting on critical issues, um, incident response, and also post-mortem analysis. Um, Prometheus uses metrics for alerting, which is really useful, really flexible. But we don't actually uh, use Prometheus to store our application metrics in the long term. Um, so we set our data retention to 15 days, which is just long enough for the monitoring use case. And I'll explain a little bit more um, why we do that in, in, in just a moment. So what does Cloudflare do? So um, a lot of people know us as a CDN, but we also do a lot, a lot more than that. So um, we support, support a lot of new protocols that allow you to speed up your website. So TLS 1.3, HTTP 2. Um, we're also one of the largest managed DNS providers in the world. So I'm explaining all of this to give you an idea of what the scope is of what we actually have to monitor using, using Prometheus. Um, so this is what our edge network looks like. It's an Anycast network. Um, we have over 115 um, different um, points of presence around the world. And um, we also serve around 6 million websites, uh, more than 6 million websites. So it's, we, we receive a lot of traffic. Um, we have a very um, widespread network. And so there's a lot to monitor. And this is what our Prometheus deployment looks like. So we have 185 Prometheus servers currently in production. We have four top level uh, Prometheus servers that are collecting federated metrics. Um, we adjust about 72,000 samples per second, um, maximum per, uh, on any given Prometheus server. And 4.6 million time series um, is, is the, the most uh, time series we have on any server. And for that, those 4.6 million time series over 15 days, that takes about 250 gigabytes on disk. Um, and we're storing those metrics on RAID 10 SSD storage. So um, a little bit about our architecture. So. Um, as this, uh, um, with uh, so many points of presence, every uh, data center is essentially configured in the same way. Um, we do routing via Anycast, um, so the, the, the user visiting a website will, will connect to the um, location closest to them. Um, and this is really important when you're thinking about how we deploy Prometheus, because a lot of these points of presence are really configured identically, which makes our deployment a lot simpler. So these are the services we tend to run in each pop, or at least the major services. So you've got HTTP, as I mentioned, DNS. Uh, we have a replicated key value store, which my uh, colleague, uh, Lorenz, uh, will talk about tomorrow. And also things like agents for attack mitigation for, for blocking uh, bad traffic. So also, in addition to the edge network, we also have our, our core data centers, um, which receive things like customer logs, customer analytics, um, audit D logs, um, HTTP errors from Nginx, application operational metrics, and also we have a lot of internal APIs which we need to monitor. So there's a, there's a, there is a lot to monitor. Um, and also, so the services that we run to support those um, internal services include Marathon, Mesos, Kafka, HBase, HDF, HDFS, Elasticsearch. And so there's a lot of exporters that we need to use to collect those metrics. So there's two main parts of Prometheus. There's the metrics exposition format, um, which I believe they're trying to make a, an IETF standard, um, and the, the data model, which is kind of part of that. And also, there's the Prometheus server itself. Um, so even if you're not using Prometheus server itself, the metrics data model provided by Prometheus is very sane. It's, it's very well designed. And we found it incredibly useful, um, especially the, the fact that it's multidimensional. So being able to slice metrics uh, using labels is, very, is, a, is a great advantage. Um, so here, for example, this tells us the rate health uh, for a given server as a percentage. So it's the number of disks active divided by uh, the, the total number of disks. Um, here, we can figure out how many distinct kernel versions we have deployed across the whole fleet. Super useful for ensuring um, that you, you are using the same version everywhere. Um, and this is an approximation of a, a metric from IO stats. So this is the equivalent of R08, which is the time to serve disk reads on average. So just having the, the metrics in Prometheus format allows us to, do, allows us to get gain, gain a lot of um, good insight into how our systems are performing. 
So also uh, using metrics for alerting is, is has been really flexible for us. So for example here, um, this uh, query will um, alert whenever the number of uh, HTTP 5 500 errors goes over 0% um, for a given service, for example. Um, and I, I won't go into detail about that, but that's the kind of query that you can do. Um, this one's a bit more complicated. I generally advise that you keep your queries nice and simple. This one I think is worthwhile though. So this one tells us when the um, when a HDFS node um, is unbalanced. So it's using um, more than 10%, uh, its disk utilization is more than 10% different to the, the cluster average as a whole. So you can do really powerful queries like that to tell you when your HDFS cluster is, is unbalanced, for example. So a bit about how we um, deploy, up, deploy Prometheus. So as I said, it was, um, it's been over a year and a half of work. We started out very small and gradually increased um, the, the, the scope of what we're doing as we, as we got agreement and consensus between different teams. So before we're using Nagios, um, there's actually a page on the Nagios documentation on how to optimize it. Um, I looked through and we'd actually applied all of the optimizations possible. Um, we were doing hundreds of, thousand check, uh, hundreds of thousands of checks through Nagios on one machine. Um, it was tuned for a high volume of um, checks. Um, it was in one, on one machine in one central location, so obviously um, not, not great for, um, from a, a high, high availability point of view. Um, and we were also using it in a slightly unusual way in that we were actually um, sending metrics data into Nagios and then using Nagios as an alerting backend for our, um, our own custom metrics pipeline. So um, we started out using uh, Prometheus. Uh, we evaluated uh, Boson as well, which uses OpenTSTB as its backing store, which we already have in production. Um, and esen uh, essentially, we settled on uh, Prometheus. And we started off by using Prometheus uh, also as an alerting backend for our own custom metrics pipeline. But that didn't really fit with the uh, Prometheus semantics, um, as I'm sure you'll see over the next couple of days. Um, Prometheus uses a pull model. And so trying to push metrics in and using a, a gateway to cache those metrics doesn't really fit very well. So we looked at how we could deploy Prometheus in a more idiomatic way. Um, we wrote a specification. There was a lot of comments, a lot of discussion on it. Um, and so it took some time to, to get consensus, convince people that actually a pull model was going to work really well for us. And we could uh, still keep our existing metrics pipeline for long-term collection of metrics, but um, use the pull model from Prometheus for monitoring. Because what you really care about monitoring is knowing when something is broken right now. You don't, you don't want to receive data five minutes later and then alert on it. You want to know what's, what the state of things is right now. So um, inside each, each point of presence, um, we have one Prometheus um, instance on every uh, management uh, server that we have. So in, in the larger points of presence, we have multiple management servers. They're all configured identically, and each of them runs Prometheus. Um, so Prometheus on that management server is connecting out to all of the servers in the uh, data center, and it knows which servers to collect to um, using uh, the file discovery mechanism, which is a JSON file, which um, gets generated on the same server as Prometheus. And we, um, we populate that JSON file using an API that we have um, that knows about all of our servers. And we update it every, every couple of minutes. We add some jitter to avoid overwhelming the API. And that's how Prometheus knows which servers should exist. So if we, if we pull a server out of production, Prometheus will be updated in a couple of minutes. So it's very dynamic. Um, so actually, rather than looking like this, Prometheus actually has multiple scrapes per server because we run multiple exporters per server. And um, uh, 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 an exporter is essentially a um, daemon that exposes uh, metrics. So we actually, as I mentioned, uh, because we have uh, multiple management nodes in um, in most of our um, points of presence, we actually have multiple Prometheus servers running, um, and each of those is configured independently. Um, there's uh, no shared state between them, so it's shared nothing architecture. Um, and if one of them goes down, the other one will continue to um, monitor. So there's no coordination between them. So from a high availability point of view, it's very reliable. Um, we also federate metrics. So um, the amount of data metrics you can store in Prometheus um, in the Prometheus server itself is bound by the size of your machine, the amount of memory, the amount of disk. Um, so what we do is we federate a small number of aggregate metrics, uh, so service level metrics, up to a uh, top level Prometheus or multiple top level Prometheuses um, in our core data center. So these are three example uh, points of presence. As I say, we have 116, but these are three examples. So we're actually pulling metrics, select metrics into our core data center so we can then do service level monitoring. Um, this is what our federation configuration looks like. If you're familiar with federation, um, we're 
I'm pulling the up uh, metric from all, all um, points of presence, which is really useful for um, seeing how a particular export is doing. We also pull Prometheus metrics about Prometheus itself from every um, points of presence. And then any, any metric that has the prefix uh, colo, colon, um, wildcard, or colo underscore wildcard, colon wildcard, we will federate up to, up to the, uh, the global level, the top level Prometheus. Um, so, as I mentioned, we have actually multiple uh, servers running in each um, point of presence. So, um, the top level Prometheus server is federating from multiple um, Prometheus servers um, in, each, um, in each location. That's actually a bit of a problem for us, um, which my colleague Lorenz is going to explain in more detail tomorrow. Um, so, um, we also run the top level Prometheus in high availability mode. So, we um, which is to say that we actually run um, pairs of Prometheus servers at the top level. Um, and again, there's, uh, it's a share nothing architecture, so there's no coordination between those two servers. If one of them goes down, the other server uh, continues to, to send us alerts. Um, so at the moment, we uh, have those top level Prometheus servers in the US. We're also going to add them in the EU, which gives us um, redundancy across uh, two different continents. Um, so I mentioned before, we, uh, our, our use case for using Prometheus is monitoring, which is what it's best designed for. Um, we store metrics for 15 days. We originally started off at two days to keep expectations really low. Um, we didn't want to have to worry about wiping all our data and starting again, especially when we have multiple servers running. So, um, so we set things low, and we've increased it to 15 days, which has been really good for us for incident analysis, post-mortems, and that kind of thing. Um, we scrape metrics every 60 seconds, which uh, sounds quite infrequent, but actually given the number of machines we have, um, we tend to spot uh, any issues that we have due to the, the wide uh, sample of data that we have. Um, federation, we scrape every 30 seconds, just because um, otherwise, with the, the way timing works when you're federating, um, if we scraped every 60 seconds, we could have wait up to two minutes to actually collect those metrics. Um, and if we want, to, we're thinking about increasing the, the sampling frequency uh, for some certain services to catch um, more brief spikes. But for the moment, it's been fine for us. And Prometheus doesn't support downsampling, so there's no downsampling here. Every data point that we collect over the 15 days is is retained and stored for those 15 days. Um, so some of the exporters we use, I mentioned the exporter is a daemon that exposes metrics. Um, there are three main ones that we install across our entire fleet. So every single Cloudflare server has three, these three exporters. Um, so we use the system level exporter, which is called the node exporter, the black box exporter, which allows you to connect to network endpoints. And uh, it can also do things like tell you if your SSL certificates are going to expire. Um, and we also use mtail, um, which is a project under the uh, Google um, uh, organization and GitHub. Um, which allows you to match patterns and increment counters based on those patterns and logs. So it's really useful for monitoring um, software that you can't necessarily instrument yourself, either because it's too complicated um, or because you just can't change the source code. So when you're deploying exporters, uh, try and stick with one exporter per service instance, so one-to-one -one mappings between each service instance and each exporter. Um, keep this, the, the concerns separate, so you don't want to try and funnel all your metrics through one exporter because you end up uh, it, 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 it kind of breaks the, the semantic model of using the up metric, but also it means that it's, that one exporter can become a single point of failure for all those metrics that, that it's collecting. Um, and also, deploy your exporters as close to the thing they're monitoring as possible, so deploy them within the same failure domain, which avoids any complications arising from the network, from connecting across a WAN, um, that kind of thing. Um, and also, um, if you're monitoring Postgres, for example, um, and you're running application-level queries um, for, against your Postgres server, make sure that you run that in a separate exporter than the exporter that's um, actually monitoring Postgres itself. You don't want slow application-level queries to affect your monitoring of the database itself. So in terms of how our alerting works, so as I mentioned, we have multiple uh, Prometheus servers um, sending the same alerts, essentially. So how do we not end up with duplicate alerts? Well, the alert manager deduplicates them for us. We run one instance of the alert manager currently. Um, we're going to run two very soon for high availability. Um, at the moment, the alert manager is our single point of failure, but it does support high availability mode. So um, all of the uh, points of presence um, all of the um, data centers around the world, they send the, the, the alerts into one single instance of Alert Manager, which deduplicates them and then sends them on to a human. Um, so as, as I mentioned, at the moment we have Alert, the alert Manager in the US, but we're also going to add it in, the, uh, in Europe as well. Um, so when you're writing alert rules, test your query on past data. So see how many times um, your metric would have fired, your, your alert would have fired in the, in the past. Uh, make sure you have an alert reference before going into production. 
um, so that somebody um, responding to the alert can action it and they know how to action it. Um, make your alert name descriptive, so don't just call it raid array. That doesn't tell me anything about what's actually broken, so use an adjective or an adverb. So maybe call it raid health degraded. That tells me exactly what, what the problem is, and I can then start using dashboards to investigate. Make sure you have an alert reference, and make sure that the alert is actionable. If somebody's going to get notified by, by an alert, they need to know that they can actually do something about it, and they're not, it's not just going to sit there and somebody starts ignoring it. And keep it simple as well. So I showed you a really complicated query before. Try and avoid those. Keep them as simple as possible, um, because once you've written a query, people have to read it and understand it, especially if they're responding to an alert and they're trying to understand why something is firing. It really helps if you keep the, the, the metric query simple. So here's an example alerting rule that we have, um, again, for the rate health being degraded. Um, so we use a notify keyword to say uh, which channel to notify. So in this case, uh, notify the SRE team uh, using JIRA. Um, and we, uh, we use a space separated list of different channels, um, which is working well for us so far. It's quite flexible. But we're thinking of maybe splitting that um, into um, so different teams as one label and using another label for the actual uh, communication channel, whether it be HipChat, JIRA, or, or uh, page duty. Um, we have a summary which has a, a value, so the value of the metrics actually included in the summary, so it tells us how many disks are faulty on that machine. And we have a templated dashboard link as well, so you can click that dashboard link and see a dashboard for that exact um, server. And the alert reference as well, which is really important before putting the alert into production. So what about monitoring your monitoring? Uh, how do you know when Prometheus is broken? So one of the things we do is we run an escalation drill every eight hours. So our, our alert um, on-call shifts are eight hours long. We have round-the-clock uh, support. So we have um, offices in London, Singapore, and San Francisco, and they're exactly eight hours apart. So at the start of the shift, we um, fire a page duty um, alert, um, which uh, serves multiple purposes. It tests our um, integration with page duty, makes sure nobody's reset the API key and not told anyone, make sure that the person on call is actually still using the same phone number, that their phone is switched on. Um, and this will escalate through. So if, if the person doesn't acknowledge it, it will it will escalate through to um, somebody higher up the chain. It'll keep going until some until somebody somebody uh, until the manager calls you. Um, <laughs> So what, um, what we also um, use Prometheus to monitor itself. So every, every Prometheus server and every colo monitors all the other Prometheus servers in the same uh, in, the point, in the same pot. Sorry, when I say colo, I mean point of presence. So every Prometheus server monitors all the others. Um, same at the top level. And then the, to uh, then the top level servers in our core data centers also monitor the, um, the Prometheus servers in each uh, point of presence. Um, in terms of monitoring alert manager, how do you know when alert manager is down? Well, we use Grafana's alerting mechanism to page. Um, this is the only um, case in which we use Grafana's alerting mechanism, because most of the time we want to use alert manager and consolidate, consolidate around that. But we found that this is really useful. So we can get Grafana to send us a, a, a page through page duty if alert manager stops, stops sending us alerts um, when it's still receiving alerts. Um, so. This is the query we use to see when um, alert manager is receiving alerts but not actually sending any out. Um, and this is an example when it actually happened. We hit a deadlock in an older version of alert manager. It stopped sending us alerts. And the, you can see the, the red spike is uh, when it stopped sending us alerts. And we got paged by Grafana to alert us to that. So we alert on that. And we also alert on when alert, alert manager is down using the up metric. So um, in terms of alert routing, so I mentioned we use um, the notify uh, keyword. We use space-separated um, uh, labels. So uh, this alert would go to HipChat, to the SRE team, and also to PageUty, to the SRE team. We're thinking about splitting those up. So we have one label for team and one label for the communication channel. Um, this is what our alert routing configuration looks like in Alert Manager. Um, yes, there's a horrible regex, um, but it, that actually works really well for us. Um, and this is what our routing tree looks like. So lots of our teams have added um, uh, HipChat channels, and they, they've um, elected to start receiving alerts, which has been fantastic for visibility. Our alert routing tree is uh, probably more complicated than it needs to be. So um, actually, where it spans out, um, some of those are due to options such as group, different grouping options for alerts to try and um, group similar alerts together. Um, but yeah, the amount of visibility we've had from that has been fantastic. Um, we're using Jira Alerts, uh, which uh, we adapted from uh, F Fabian's um, repository here, which allows us to send less imminent alerts into Jira so that we can then triage them as part of a backlog, as part of a sprint, um, and address lower priority issues. 
Um, this is the kind of thing that it, this is the kind of Jira that it creates. Um, it updates the description as the alerts get updated. Um, it will reopen the issue if it fires again. And it uses the uh, label, it uses a, a hash on, um, in one of the Jira labels. So it will reopen the same ticket. So if you have a floppy alert, it'll just create, re it will just uh, keep reopening the same ticket rather than creating a new ticket every time the alert fires. Um, we're going to look at improving this so that it uh, reopens a new ticket if the alert hasn't fired in the last day or so. And we're also going to look at adding uh, comments so that every time it fires, it actually adds a comment rather than just updating the description, which can be kind of confusing. But the nice thing about this is you can see the history of how the um, alert was fixed last time. Um, we also wrote Alert Manager 2ES, which sends alerts into Elasticsearch, which means we can use, then use Grafana to an analyze the data. So we can use, see uh, which team uh, received how many alerts over the last seven days, for example. And we can monitor trends over time as well. Uh, that's open source. It's on GitHub. Um, we also wrote a tool called Unsee, which allows you to visualize your alerts uh, as a dashboard. Um, it looks like this. Um, it's had uh, quite a few contributors now. Um, again, it's open source, so please, please feel free to use it. And it will support multiple alert managers as well. Um, we also contributed AM tool, which is an alert, man alert manager CLI tool for um, viewing silences and alerts from the command line. Again, that's open source. It's in the alert manager repo under the command directory. So um, some of the pain points we had, uh, some of these will be con uh, covered tomorrow by Lorenz, who's a systems engineer at Cloudflare. Um, but some of the issues we had were storage pressure. Um, so um, tweaking our storage um, uh, parameters to ensure that we, um, we, we were able to cope with the amount of metrics that we were ingesting. Um, the uh, options for this are much improved in more recent versions. Um, I'm, I'm aware that I'm running out of time, so I'm going to skip through these very briefly. But this is, this is improved, and it's going to get even better in uh, Prometheus 2.0. Um, we had some issues with Alert Manager, so we found that the API was uh, very slow uh, to deal with our volume um, of, um, of alerts that we were putting into it, especially when we were testing a lot of alerts in the, um, in the initial phases of our deployment. Um, we're currently using version 0 0.6.2, um, which is working really well for us. Um, I want to thank Fabian for all of his efforts on um, Alert Manager and also Max Stewart, who have been working on the UI to address a lot of the issues that we're seeing. We haven't tested that UI yet, but we will do soon, so thank you very much for that. So Alert Manager has been working really, really well for us recently. Um, we also had a cardinality explosion. So we had an issue where um, a server that usually has 4 million metrics suddenly had 14 million. Um, I found this out about midnight. Uh, it woke me up. Um, I wasn't very happy about that. But it was uh, quite difficult to find out what the problem was. Uh, so in Prometheus, you can uh, try and see how many metrics you have using the underscore, underscore name, underscore, underscore label. Um, but in this case, it wasn't actually telling me uh, which metrics were, were um, causing problems and causing the, the server to stop ingesting metrics. So um, I found the storage tool in the GitHub repo, and that allowed me to actually introspect the, the heads database, which I believe um, has all of the, the head chunks in there. And it allowed me to see actually which metric was causing the issue. Um, we stopped that service that was actually, it was creating a lot of metrics churn, a lot of high cardinality um, by um, including IP addresses and labels. And it was doing a top 100. So the amount of churn for that was, was huge. So we stopped that service. And um, we deleted the metrics using the HTTP API, which worked great. And then Prometheus recovered really gracefully. So that was a, a really good experience. Um, one thing I would say, if you're deploying Prometheus like we are, um, or even in a small deployment, uh, try and standardize your, metrics uh, your metric labels early. Uh, we did some of this, but not, we've not enough. Um, so one of the things when you're monitoring uh, uh, a network endpoint, for example, there's a source and also a target. So try and figure out um, how you differentiate between where the probe is originated from, originated from and where it's actually, uh, what it's actually probing. Um, think about identifying environments, so production versus staging versus development. Ident identifying different clusters. So if you have different uh, Postgres installations, for example, uh, how to differentiate between those. Or if you just deploy the same app, but with a different configuration, it could also be a, a potential uh, a, a, different, a distinct label to use as well. So next steps. Um, we're really pleased about Prometheus 2.0. It's going to help lower disk I.O. Uh, we, I think, we're churning quite through SSDs quite quickly on our top-level Prometheus servers. Um, and so Prometheus 2.0 will, will help a lot with that. And it also handles metrics churn uh, much, much better as well. So that's going to be really useful for us. 
Um, we're also looking at integration with long-term storage, so shipping metrics using the remote write uh, endpoint from Prometheus into our long-term storage, which at the moment we're using OpenTSDB for that. Um, we're also looking at using one uh, query language. We like PromQL a lot, so we're thinking about using it for querying OpenTSDB, for example. So I actually have a, a proxy that I wrote um, just in my spare time that does that. So if you're interested in that, uh, speak to me afterwards. Um, other improvements, so I mentioned that we federate multiple sets of metrics from every uh, point of presence. We want to avoid doing that because it creates a lot of complications that Lorenz will explain tomorrow. Um, we want to make Alert Manager highly available. That is the weakest point in our deployment currently. Mm -hmm. Things like visual similarity search. I know Tristan Colgate did some work on that, so you can see um, similar metrics. So when you have a certain pattern, pattern within your metrics, you can see all the metrics that did something similar. And um, improving, making it easier for uh, developers to onboard with Prometheus, giving them uh, templated alerts or alert menus that they can uh, choose from. Um, we're going to be blogging more about how we use Prometheus on the uh, Cloudflare blog. Uh, I've gone through things very quickly here, um, but we're going to go into more detail on the blog. Um, please check out our GitHub um, repos because uh, we have a lot of open source tooling relating to um, Prometheus, including exporters as well. And please do uh, try out Prometheus 2.0. We haven't yet, but we're really excited about it, and we plan to start testing it soon. And if you have any questions, I'm at Bostock on Twitter. Um, please feel free to ask me any questions about our deployment. Thank you very much. Thank we you. We, yes, we've got 10 minutes for questions. Cool. So just raise your hand. Uh, we've got two people with mix in the middle. And uh, Hello, Gaurav, the site. So as in your deployment, you are monitoring n number of nodes. It's quite a big number. Yeah. So how you, how you are automating all these configurations, like any new server will come up or anything will be down, then how, how the configuration will be updated across the environment? So. So we, any tool we, you are using or any strategy you are uh, using to update the complete configurations of all the Prometheus and everything? So um, in terms of which uh, machines we have in each uh, data, data center, we use we wrote a Go daemon that queries an API that we have and updates uh, a JSON file. So every time a server is removed or added, it will update that JSON file. So that's using the file service discovery mechanism. Um, in terms of how we deploy that configuration, we use our configuration management, which is Salt. And we, currently we have um, all of the alerting rules, all the recording rules um, structured by directory, and we deploy those to each to each server. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so um, I have a quick question. We are going on. on. Uh, my company is undergoing uh, uh, Germany as yours. So we are moving off the Magios for Google Live Singer and um, I'm moving to Prometheus. Is the mic on? Is it red or? It says it is. It's blinking red. I, I can repeat the question afterwards. Yeah, please repeat it. Okay, sorry. Right. Uh, so we are undergoing a similar journey from Nagios Fork to Prometheus. And now my question is, uh, we have a couple of really custom event handlers in, um, in Nagios, which are triggered when, uh, when specific alerts are, are fired so that they are fully automated and I don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to do tasks manually. The question is, can I achieve something like that with Alert Manager? Um, yeah, so for that, you could use the uh, webhook from Alert Manager. So that's something we're looking at. We haven't done yet, but um, you just tell Alert Manager to send notifications to that HTTP endpoint, and then you can um, All right. do, do what you want with that. OK, thanks. Hey, uh, can you go uh, into a little bit more detail into that scenario with Grafana firing alerts when Alert Manager is dead? Because that's pretty interesting, I think, for me. Personally. Yeah, sure. So um, Grafana allows you to define an alert based on um, a certain threshold. Um, it's uh, specific to um, each dashboard, I believe. So um, if you delete that dashboard, I think you lose the alerts. So you have to be really careful with that. Um, but you uh, basically, you create a graph panel, and then there's an alert tab within that, and you can define the alert within there. And then you, you can send it to different integrations. So PagerDuty is one of them. OK, and so how it works is like, what is the interaction between Prometheus and Grafana in this case? So um, Grafana is uh, querying Prometheus. Yeah. Um, Prometheus is ingesting the oh, uh, and manager metrics. Oh, it's not answering, and it's going to, or? Um, so in that case, Grafana is monitoring uh, alert manager, yeah. so just alert manager. Um, if Prometheus is down, then we, we alert on that using one of the other Prometheus servers. Yeah, yeah right, of course. OK, thanks. Um, so in terms of your per pop Prometheus instances, 
Um, do you have any Grafana instances pointing at them? Like, if you want to look at per pop metrics, are you like, what does that look like? Or do you just go and look at Prometheus itself and just do like dynamic queries in the query browser? That's a really good question. So our SREs have access uh, to the Prometheus service directly, so they can use the HTTP API in every pop. Um, but uh, we actually have 200 data sources in Grafana. We actually hit the limit of 100, and they've increased it to 1,000. And we're looking at ways of um, reducing that either by uh, doing some, using some sort of proxy. Um, but yeah, every every single Prometheus server you can access directly from Grafana. So you, but you only have one Grafana instance. You haven't sharded Grafana and had a put a redirector in front of it or whatever to say, oh, I'm going to this pop, so I should use Grafana five or whatever. No, we're just okay. using one instance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 hi, over here. Hi. <laughs> so first of all, I can tell you that when you you have a high availability, uh, high available alert manager, you will not have to use Grafana for alerting because you will always have one alert manager that will alert that the other one is down. We should. Uh, we might. Yeah, I haven't thought. We'll keep the Grafana um, check in there anyway. Um, another thing we looked at doing is using a sort of dead man's handle. So having a service that exposes metrics that then get ingested to Prometheus, and trigger an alert, and then have that same service check if the alert comes all the way through. So a full, a full um, loop. Um, but yeah, for, for now, the Grafana check is working really well. Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you if you can explain more uh, why uh, do you think it's in, enough to have 15 days uh, retention policy? Because uh, my colleagues are convinc convincing me that we need uh, at least one year. <laughs> <laughs> So um, Prometheus, um, using its internal storage, only um, store, uh, is bounded by the size of uh, one machine. So if that if that machine uh, loses its data, then that, that can be problematic. And if you're storing a year's worth of data, then that's, that's obviously a concern. At the moment, we're just using Prometheus for monitoring. Um, we do want to ship the metrics directly into OpenCCB. And we are doing that currently, but using a, a shim that we, we'd like to improve. Um, so. My answer to that is um, we're, we're using really Prometheus for monitoring and not long-term storage. And I would class one year or more as, as, as long-term storage. Um, but we've definitely had people request more than 15 days, so 30 days, three months, that kind of thing. Um, I think we will increase that probably to a month. Um, but at the moment, we're still expanding. We're still um, adding new services to Prometheus. Um, we just recently added Nginx metrics. We just uh, re recently added metrics from our DNS server. So as uh, teams implement uh, Prometheus endpoints, um, our number of metrics is going to increase. Um, we're still in the early days of our deployment, really. So. Um, so we want to kind of keep that under control, keep expectations low for the moment so people don't expect that they can have months worth of data and then we find out we run out of space or memory, for example. Uh, so you're in the data point. Uh, we have about 40K-ish samples per second and we have them for like nine months now and it works. But you have all those considerations and we are waiting for long-term storage. Next question is over here. Let's have a question, then an answer to the uh, deadman switch. So there is actually an integration and for PagerDuty uh, for exactly this. So then you can make sure that uh, all your metrics pipeline or your alerting pipeline from Prometheus to Alert Manager to PagerDuty is working correctly, because you can basically have one alert that always fires. And um, if that alert doesn't uh, arrive at PagerDuty, then PagerDuty um, can uh, page you. So there's like a third party integration for that. Does uh, that well. test the inge ingestion as well? So, well, um, you can, what, what do you mean by that? So um, the thing I was thinking of is a daemon that actually exposes metrics and then maybe uh, changes the metric periodically. And then you could actually test the ingestion as well. I think, I think the integration you're talking about, I think you'd use a synthetic alert for that. Or I guess, I guess you could do something similar. Yeah, so it's like it's one alert that always fires. And that way you, you know that um, Prometheus can reach Alert Manager, and Alert Manager successfully reaches PagerDuty. Yeah. OK, cool. I'll have a look at that. Thank you. Hello. Uh, how do you calculate uh, aggregation metrics in federated environment? Um, so at the moment, it's quite complicated uh, because we uh, federate multiple sets of metrics from every um, data center. I definitely recommend that you don't do that. Um, my colleague Lorenz will talk more about that tomorrow and um, with some example queries as well. So that's probably best answered then. OK, thank you. Thank you.